What is up everyone? Welcome to Gaming Hour. I am your host Anthony and today we are back with more tutorial and tips on Hearts of Iron 4. And in this video we are going to be, or I am going to be showing you how to survive World War II as Paravoo Parava Francois or as you Americans call it, France. So those who are blissfully unaware, France isn't in the best position in World War II. They start with a lot of disadvantages and a lot of advantages for those who care to see them. So I am going to be teaching you guys how to survive World War II until the rest of the Allies can join in the war uh, as France. And so I am going to just show you here that I'm playing on regular, Iron Man, historical focuses, and I don't have any buffs on. So this is how you can actually get the achievement. Um, how I forget what the achievement's called, but the one where you have to survive as France till 1948. This uh, guide will show you how to survive until that time. Now you won't be successful, but I will. Um, you won't be successful attacking the enemy, possibly. So this is going to essentially allow you to just survive. And so we're going to start, and then I'm going to explain to you the advantages and disadvantages of Paravu Parava Francois. So, in 1936, France is in a terrible position. They're surrounded by three potential enemies, and have a terrible army, terrible stockpile, terrible economy, a terrible air force, and the only thing they got going for them is the closeness of their allies. Britain is only a channel cross away. So, starting off, we're just going to go over the enemies we're going to eventually have to deal with. The German Reich, Italy, and possibly Nationalist Spain if they win the Civil War. Now you won't really have much say over who wins, and normally the Nationalists win regardless if you help them or not. So we're not going to be worried about them. Also, France has a ton of colonies in Africa, Asia, South America, and little islands spread out across the world. Essentially, making you a colonial empire like Britain. But the problem is, France has a lot of colonies that are really spread out and sparsely defended. Of course, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia are a problem to deal with Japan. And of course, your islands over here in the Pacific, you've got your Africa that Italy can and Spain can go after. So, um, the American colonies are generally protected, but you know, you just gotta worry about them too. So this guide will show you how to survive as mainland France. So, you're not going to defend your colonies. You're not gonna worry about them. You're gonna pull all your troops back to mainland France because you're gonna need every single division you can get your hands on. So, what I like to do first is grab all the armies, all the troops, all across the world, and essentially what you're going to do is delete the garrison ones so that way you can get the manpower back and uh, the equipment because you're not going to need all these garrison troops especially if you're not going to defend your colonies so you're going to bring them all back and you're essentially just going to go through and delete the ones with this little uh, red arrow symbol this shows that they're a garrison troop if you open up the recruit and deploy they're, they're a brigade colony so as you can see, they only have six infantry brigades and nothing more compared to the infantry, which have nine and an artillery division. So obviously that is more powerful and that will help stop the Germans at your line. So I'm essentially going to go through and just delete all those units. I will be back as soon as I have completed that. Okay, so now that we've done that, we now have down to 51 divisions spread out across the world. What you are going to want to do is create a fallback line in mainland France. I generally just do it up in Paris. And then bring all your troops home. So, now you'll have 51 divisions on mainland uh, France. So you can divide them up as you see fit. Now, what we're gonna, now we're going to go through the rest of these. The research. I generally go down industrial stuff first. Just so that way I can pump out factories and whatnot. Now your civilian factories. What I generally do is build up a couple civilian factories, not too many, like six, just to get you going up. Then, all right, so let's def let's talk about how you're gonna win this game. France is in a terrible position for attacking because not only will you have to deal about the west wall of Germany, you'll have to defend the Belgian border when they go through the Schlieffen plan. 
you'll also have to defend the Italian Alps, which they will also have an Alpine fort set uh, spread across the border here. And then, possibly, by 1942 or 3, you'll have to deal with Spain on this uh, front here. So you're going to have to fight a war on three, three, possibly even four fronts. The one thing you got going for you is your Maginot Line, which is a line of ten forts that you start already out with. So that is really good. The Germans cannot punch through the line. The AI sometimes, when it's AI versus AI, they can punch through uh, easy because the AI is stupid with how they attack and defend. But if you have a consistent set of like 24 units on this border, the Germans will not be able to punch through the line. And they won't, they generally don't do any um, aerial attacks, like paratroopers or anything to go around. So generally, you could just hold this line. So now what you're going to want to do is build up forts along the Belgian border and the Italian border. Don't worry about Spain right off the bat because they're not going to be a huge issue until like 1943. So you just build it up to five. And you also have uh, national focuses which will give you another two forts on both the Belgian and the Italian front. So that will bring it up to seven. And seven is essentially going to protect you against any uh, attack. They won't be able to punch through. And they don't usually naval invade, so you won't have to really defend your coastlines all that much. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to build a five along the Belgian, five along the Italian, and your Maginot line here is totally safe. So now we're going to go down national focuses. What you want is to get now. This is going to be the guide for going down traditional France. Now, we're not going to go support the right or the left. We're going to go down support the status. I generally go with Britain, and because I want defensive stratagems. This removes the national focus disjointed government. You actually start with quite a few bad national focuses. You start with Victors of the Great War, which reduces your manpower already off the bat, which is not good, and it takes a lot longer to research your land doctrine, which will greatly help you defend your territory. You also have disjoint government, which basically makes... It gives you more political power costs, and it lowers your national unity, which will make you fall a lot faster. And then you have protected by the Maginot Line. Your planning speed is down, but your planning is better. So essentially, you got we want to get rid of these two as fast as you can because you want the more new unity and you want the more manpower and the doctrine research time. So you're going to want to get rid of those as fast as you can. The way to do that is to get defensive stratagems and then army reform. So you're going to want to basically rush for this and then rush over to this as fast as you can. So we're going to go down government reform, which will essentially just give us some political power, allow us to get some advisors. Now we're going to check our equipment. We essentially are. We also have terrible in terms of factories. I mean, we've got two pumping out rifles, one for support equipment, one for artillery, one for a tank, and one for motorized. Our naval production is not great either. And as France, since this, we're not going to be going out and attacking navally, we don't really need a navy. So we're just going to stop the production of our navy to give us our oil back. And hopefully that will allow us to produce things here quicker. So, uh, just going through, making sure. You can also delete this since you're never going to need that again. Construction's good. So now we're just going to roll through the game uh, at a relatively quick rate. Something I also like to uh, like to do is bring the uh, full navy into one navy which is just to help defend the English Channel and uh, the coastline of France. That way, if there is a naval invasion, uh, you really won't have to worry too much. Or you can kind of not worry about your naval efforts. Just leave them out there. If they die, they die. More manpower for you. Also, I like to bring my air force, or get rid of all my air wings, except the ones that are on our carrier. Which is one of France's uh, benefits. It starts with a carrier. N only uh, England, Japan, America, France start with uh, carriers. Russia, German, and Italy don't. 
So that's one of our benefits. Even though it's only one, it's one is better than nothing. So that's 49. We're still waiting on one or two more. And after that, we're going to essentially divide up our divisions. Now, Germany is going down Rhineland, which is essentially will give us a choice. We can either go to war with them right off the bat, or we can just accept that that's what's going to happen. Now, we don't want to start war with Germany uh, early. We want to just essentially wait for them to have to declare war on us. We want to give ourselves as much time as possible. So, we're just going to wait and next time something pops up I will be back okay guys this just popped up now Germany has finished the remilitarization of the Rhineland and now we can either decide to go to war which will essentially start a civil war in our territory give us less national unity and give us a like, loss of political power so yeah you don't really want to go down there unless you want to lose so we're just going to issue a diplomatic objection, which will essentially just piss off Germany. Also, we completed government reform, so we're going to go down and support the status quo. And I'm just waiting on the rest of my army to return to Europe, and we will be back. Okay, guys, another update. Spain has just started civil war, and the rest of the army is here, so we're going to show you how to divide up the army. You're going to want to divide them into two or three armies, depending on how many troops you have now. We're going to want to divide between the Alpine front and the German front and the Belgian front. You're going to want 24, 24, 24. Now, you only have 51, so do the math. You're not going to have enough. So you, just, you generally want to have 24 on this front and 24 on this front, and then add troops as you create them to the Belgian front. So now we just have to figure out how we want to split up our army. We obviously want the Mountaineers on the Alpine front. We're going to break you up by 7. We're going to take half the tanks. Let's see what else. Uh, we're going to just send them over here for now. Okay, so we got 1437. So let's see, we'll take half the cavalry. We'll take half the motorized. And then we just need three more, so we'll just pick three of these here. Infantry, now we got 24. We're going to select the commander. Uh, we'll take Jean Latre de Tazingti. Uh, I only took one year French in seventh grade, so I apologize if it's not on point. Now we're going to take the cavalry out, and we got 24 for the German front. We'll take Alfusse Juin, and we'll put him right on the German front. And the cavalry will just remain in Paris for now. They eventually the cavalry group will go on the Belgian front once the forts are built. Let's take a look, see actually how they're doing. Okay, so the factories are still being produced. We haven't started on the uh, extension of our Maginot line yet, but that's normal. Now we will let's see what Italy's doing. They're going industrial and they're going down the Reich Autobahn. What is Britain doing? Reinforce the Empire. Okay, so everything's going natural for now. Nothing too nuts. Alright, so we will be back as soon as something happens. Okay, so we're back. We just finished electronical engineering, so we're going to go down mechanical computing. Now also I want to discuss what we're going to do with our air force. So, we generally want to split our air force into two air wings, or air bases rather. So we're just going to take half of everything. Go one, two. We're going to go select 90 of you. And that's the German Air Force, and then it's Italy. We're just going to take the rest. Except for our naval bombers, we'll put them up by the English Channel. They'll help our Navy when that happens. Also, let's check our logistics. So as you can see, we are just piss poor on the rifle. It'll take 500 days, so we need to really improve that. But, so we don't want to produce any new troops. We need more troops on the Belgian front, but we can't produce any troops while we still are like in debt. I generally wait till we have a couple thousand in stockpile of rifles before I go producing anything else. As for the tanks, that's going to take a while as well, but eventually as you move down the focuses and get more factories rolling, uh, you'll be able to produce more and get more resources. If you need resources like oil or anything else badly, 
you're just going to want to buy from the U.S. because that's a safe trading route. The Germans generally don't send out any U-boats out here, so you won't have to really worry about sending your navy out there to protect. As for the Civil War, uh, Republicans are getting their asses handed to them, as per natural, but it's still early in the war. So, um, other than that, we will be back if something happens. Okay, guys, so we are back, and now this is one of our main... Uh, events that we get in 1936. The communist workers are threatening with strikes. So essentially we're gonna lose a lot of our factory capabilities for some time. Now we have a choice. We can either let them strike, which essentially makes our factories non-existent for 90 days, or we can negotiate a deal for three, uh, for essentially a year and make ourselves more communist. We don't want to go down to communists, so we're just gonna let them strike for 90 days and we'll deal with it once it's done. Ugh. Other than that, nothing really has happened. The Spanish Civil War is still going on. So, we will be back if anything happens. Okay, guys, so we are back. Few quick updates. Britain, we have went down go with Britain, and we have officially joined the Allies. Uh, as for the Spanish Civil War, Republicans are getting their asses handed to them. Italy defeated Ethiopia. Um, so now we're just going to go down... Strength in government, which is essentially a year's worth of uh, national unity increase, and then we can go down, get rid of disjoined government. So we're just going to go through, check what I did. I essentially got a silent workhouse, workhorse, which is more political power, so I can make get more of these guys quicker. Uh, the factories are still being produced, so we'll actually start on the new Maginot Line uh, very soon. Uh, we're still improving our stockpile. Nothing there, nothing there. We haven't started trading yet because we're relatively okay on oil right now. Um, other than that, nothing else really has happened. Let's check with everyone else. Oh, they just finished. Let's see what they're going to go down. What are you doing? Triumph in Africa and industrial effort. So, nothing new there. Uh, the Spanish Civil War is not such a landslide as I thought it, as it usually goes. They've been fighting back and forth, but nothing but the Republicans are still losing so all right we'll be back in a few okay guys so we are back and essentially we just completed our Alpine line so we will add two forts on every uh, province against Italy so that's an early start now we're still producing the five that are going to be uh, produced and we've also almost finished the um, extension of our Maginot line the five forts along the Belgian and Luxembourg uh, borders so and we've almost we're just gonna keep going extend the Maginot add an extra two to everything um, logistics wise we are almost in the positive for everything so we're just gonna build up a good stockpile then we'll start producing troops and possibly some tank units for the Belgian border and then let's see what else are we running what else is happening? The Spanish Civil War is just about over. They're in the final stage of winning. Uh, Germany is not doing anything. Russia's going through a great purge. So, in reality, there's nothing too crazy going on. So, um, other than that, we will be back. Okay, guys, we are back again. And we have just completed the focus of extending the Maginot line, so now we will have an extra two forts on the entire line. Um, now we're just going to go down Leve and Mas, all the way down to Army Reform. Now let's just check it around. We've almost completed our final uh, Maginot extensions, and we've actually begun producing additional forts on the Italian border. The Spanish Civil War ended with the Nationalists being victorious, as they normally are. Uh, the Soviets just completed their Great Purge, and in terms of what I've done, I added a Defense uh, Specialist, so that will give us an extra 10 Defense, which is good, since that's what we're going to be doing primarily. We're also going to pick a, another person, and I haven't decided, so let's see. I can either do Captain Industry, Quartermaster. Um, mm -hmm. I think the extra political power is probably a good thing. So we're going to do that. And let's see what, what's Britain up to. Fortify East Asia. Air innovations. Nothing yet. Eh, nothing yet. Okay. So we will be back shortly. Okay, guys. 
just coming back with a little uh, update on what is going on. Germany has Anschluss Austria, which is natural. There was nothing we had a choice about. Uh, Italy has claimed on Yugoslavia, which is actually fairly good because that way Yugoslavia won't end up joining the Axis. They'll probably end up falling, but they won't, you know, jo become an enemy of us. So, Italy's going down fortification effort, which is essentially going to add uh, forts along this border with me, which is, again, normal. Um, now, we're going to essentially create our secret weapon here. Germany has a lot of tanks, right? So they, we need something to counteract that. I have also, I've just researched AT. I will start producing it soon. We won't be able to produce these divisions, but we will be able to set up the template for them, which is gonna be essentially an AT. Now something that is cheap and easy is to just duplicate the infantry and replace the uh, artillery with AT. So boom. And then we're just gonna name them infantry plus AT. Easy peasy. We'll lead them up just because screw it. Now we don't have any AT to do, so we can't produce any right now. We are going to start producing a couple infantry divisions just to start lining the border a little bit with uh, Belgium. Because it's 1938, so very soon we might end up getting drawn into a war. Uh, also, what has gone on, Japan has invaded China which is, they're getting their asses kicked really fast, faster than normal, but that's okay. Because even if uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos falls, it's not a big deal, because what we're trying to achieve here is to defend mainland France. So our colonies are expendable. Of course, that's manpower we could use, but whatever. Also, our national unity is now up to 50 because we were able to complete uh, defensive stratagems and remove disjoined government. Plus, we strengthened our government, so it moved up. So now we're working towards army reform, which will remove victors of the Great War. After that, we're going to move down the um, industrial, first metropolitan, then colonies. Go down to extra research, nuclear, and after that, we can either decide to go down either one of these, or we can just do construction engineering, which will help us produce more forts quickly. So, I'll be back if anything else happens. Okay guys, next big event has kicked off. Germany has de demanded the Studentland, which is essentially this province in Czechoslovakia, and now we have a choice. We can either join with them and try to defeat the Germans. Already they've lined my border in preparation of this decision, so that's a dumb idea, because it's just going to end up pissing off the Germans and the Italians. So we can either go to war with Germany and Italy alone without British support, or we can just leave them to their fate, which is what we're going to do, unfortunately. And they've taken the ground and essentially neutered Czechoslovakia, so they're going to fall eventually. Alright, we've also got army reform now, which is, we are now going down the um, Grand Battle Plan Doctrine. We've also got, we're now working our way down to get more military factories so we can start producing more quicker. I'm going to eventually start producing AT. If we open up construction, we've just about finished up the uh, Alpine line here. We're working on some more military factories, and then we're starting early preparations for our Spanish uh, line, which is only two forts for now, because we do need the factories. We need these. We need to start pumping out more uh, defensive stuff for these fronts. Since this one, I'm not going to worry about till like 1941 or two. Um, so yeah. What else is going on? Uh, Japan's gaining some ground. Not a whole lot. Uh, what's the U.S. thinking? War plant orange. Whoa. Okay, that's early, but good for them. You know, if they want to join the Allies early, that helps us. What's Germany doing? Eastern claims, so they're going to talk to Lithuania. They're not doing anything. What's the Russians doing? Anti-fascism. That's nothing new. Authorized. Okay, so nothing too too new to talk about. Uh, let's let's check out our research because we've done quite a bit. I'm just going through everything. You can see what I've gone through and grabbed up. I go through these just to get the engineer and the hospital because eventually I want to put those on my infantry and AT infantry, so that way they will be able to 
defend themselves better. We got the AT. We rushed that. Working on brand battle plan. We're not going to worry about our navy. Don't worry about researching anything in the naval tree because we're not going to produce any new shipping until after the war. In terms of aircraft, I got this one fairly early, just so that way once I start producing it, it can replace the old fighters. Engineering. We're just now getting into the 38 section. And industry. I've really kept going in the industry so that way we can produce more quicker. So yeah, that's about it. We're we just got some more troops on the line here. We're about to produce some more here. And yeah, all right, we'll be back. Okay guys, we are back and war has just kicked off in Europe. Poland has refused the German ultimatum to cede the province of Danzig. So Germany has invaded. Poland will very likely join the allies and then Britain will probably end up trying to pull me into the war. Let's just go over what we have so far, or what's new really. So Italy joined the Axis. And so uh, that means I'm going to be at war with them. Uh, Czechoslovakia gave in to German demands and essentially just became Slovakia a puppet. So they can't help us. Germany's very likely going to come through Amsterdam, or I mean uh, Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. But we've prepared our Maginot Line and our troops here. So they will not be moving from this position. Uh, our Maginot Line is prepared. We've got some radar stations just built up, so that will help. We'll deploy our fighters. Our guys here in the Alpine regions won't move. Let's just check what we've got, everything else. We've fully decked out with commando, logistics, and cavalry, plus our defense guy. We've got AMX, which helps, gives buffs to our lighter tanks. We've got the silent workhorse and the backroom backstabber. We've got, all right, so let's move down. Trade, I am trading for 16 oil with US currently. Uh, construction, just building some more military factories and radar stations. Production, we're producing a buttload of guns, support equipment, artillery, AT, light tanks. I've also started production of heavy tanks just to play around with uh, the possibility of maybe a breakthrough eventually. Motorized, and we're producing all kinds of aircraft to reinforce them once they're shot down. We're st we have not produced a navy, and we will not be producing a navy, but we'll deploy them out in the channel channel bay and I think the western approaches should be good enough as for our air force we're going to deploy them at the in the home front and just set them to those same with the Italians because we really don't need to lose men that we don't need to lose so all right we're just gonna continue here Britain wants us to join the war. We are not going to join the war. Because they're going to go around the Maginot, but this will at least give us some time to prepare our defenses. I want to join the Allies. Okay. Also, I just want to reset this line because the Germans, once they invade, it'll mess up the entire front line. So until Belgium's completely defeated, we're just going to set the line to there. And the same with this one. From Metz. All along to Woodhouse. Okay. Now we can buff it up. I, no, I'm going to save the power. So that way I can do it once war officially kicks off. Uh, that line is good. We got the line there. We'll start producing troops down there sometime soon. Now we just have to hope the Germans won't break our line too fast or break our line at all because then this guide would be pointless and whatever you're gonna do if you do join the war don't try to be a hero and save Belgium or the Netherlands it's just it's not worth it you know just let them fall hold your line and essentially just hold your position until like 1948 or until the Allies get strong enough to or until Germany falls or whatever. After that, do whatever you feel is necessary. Hmm. Alright, so we'll be back once war officially kicks off. Okay guys, we are back and Germany has just declared war on the Benelux region, so they'll be going to war with all these guys. <laughs> Let's just watch the carnage. 
from the safety of our Maginot. Actually, we can set these guys up on the proper front line now. I don't really have to worry about them. Alright, let's just walk to Carnage. Poor guys. They could just literally sweep around. But thankfully, we're not at war with them yet. They haven't officially declared the war. And they're not going to, it looks like. At least for some time. Why are these guys out there? <laughs> oh good, we got some factories, so we're going to start producing our medium tanks now. We're eventually going to want to integrate these into our army. And also guys, just so you're aware, this um, guide, you don't have to follow it exact. There's a lot of things that I do that are just prefer preferential to me, like the going to heavy down industry. You guys can just totally go nuts. I'm just showing you the proper way to defend your country is with forts. You're going to want the forts, you're going to want a decent si decent army in order to defend those forts. Alright, so what, what is Germany? They're going down rocketry. So we still got some time on our hands before official war is declared on us. And the Germans are just sweeping through. <laughs> Sucks for them. Alright, there goes that. What is uh, Russia doing? Workers' culture. Yeah. Alright, let's check on America, see what they're doing. Giant wakes. Oh, good. So they are preparing for a war, at least. That helps. <laughs> and it looks like the Netherlands is about to fall. Oh, good. We can get some more factories up here. We're going to want as many factories as we really can get so we can pump out everything. Don't worry about naval stuff, unless... You have a better grasp on the naval command than I do. In which case, good on you. I personally rarely use the navy as France. I normally just focus on totally defending my territory until America and Britain arrive. Which is generally not till like the, the late 40s. <laughs> Alright, just wait for Germany to wipe out those guys so I can set up a proper front line. Now it looks like Germany is has total control. Lovely. Now we're going to delete that, and we can set up the proper front line. All right, let's divide them out, get them entrenched up. And you know what? I'm going to add the extra bonuses. Uh, you know what? I'll just toss engineer companies on both for now. Once I get more XP, I'll throw on field hospitals, because we want them entrenched. Definitely want them entrenched. Uh, as much defense as we can really get would help. And for here, I'm thinking more industrialists. We're going to get some more military factories soon. They're just rocking down the rocketry. And they're just tearing across Africa right now. That's unfortunate for the Brits, but nothing we can do. We're not defending our colonies. Good. Alright, we'll go down nuclear effort. And we got four to choose from. So I think we definitely want to rock that. Doom and doom. Alright. As France, we're actually pretty well off on resources in terms of steel, so we can really just pump out the guns. Which is always a good thing. I'd like more tanks, though. No. Speak of the devil. Alright. We're going to produce up a ton of tanks, so we're going to need more oil from the US of A. Let's bump it up to that much. And it looks like the Germans are just sitting there. Same with the Italians. Doesn't look too concerning as of right now. Alright, alright, alright. So we will be a bastion of uh, supply for the Allies. They can line up on our line, try to push across the West Wall if they want. I doubt that that will be much success to them, but whatever floats their boat, I guess. 
And as for the Spanish, we really should start prepping a Mountaineer set. So we'll produce four mountains. And these guys are just going to hold the line down there as well. I'm thinking we start buffing up down here. And this won't be a full playthrough, guys. We're just going to wait till the war kicks off so you guys can... So I can prove to you guys that this theory or this strategy works. And I apologize for the lag. Okay. Germany, you're gonna go war with France now? War with France? War with Francois? Oh, Versbung. Okay, well, let, you know what? Let's just join the war, just so that way I can prove to you guys that this theory works. Okay, now let's see. Let's see some attacks. Ooh, one lease. Heck yeah. I'll take some one leases. Romania. That's surprising. What are you doing? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. What are we not producing? carrier fighters. That's natural. <laughs> so it looks like the Germans aren't really trying to push us because they realize that we have a very strong fortified position. And although that we're not gonna they're not gonna be able to push, they will attempt little breaches here and there, but so let's just see if they will. Same with the Italians, they're not really gonna try too hard. Right off the bat anyway. Let's bump it up to extensives, that way we have the manpower to continue fighting. And, as you can see, they won't push. <laughs> and, and essentially you just need to sit here until the war is over. You really don't even need to put any planes in the sky or ships in the ocean. You just need to sit here and wait and eventually defend your Spanish border as well. And over time, the Allies will either slowly push the Axis back, or you'll just sit here at a stalemate. And that's essentially how you win as France, guys. Or, well, not really win, I suppose just survive. And if you survive till 1948, you will get an achievement. I think it's Viva la France, but uh, it could be anything else. Anyway, guys, I do hope you sincerely enjoyed this. I hope this really did help you out here. And if you would be of so kind as to go to our GoFundMe page so we can we are working on a low budget movie which we will we need money for professional equipment things like that so there will be a link in the description guys if you go down there um, if you donate you will have uh, special benefits there's more information on the um, GoFundMe page so just please 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 do that for us and until next time guys I will see you all in the next video see y'all later